Thank you all so much. Please. Thank you. Well, I said I wasn't going to get emotional, and by God, I'm not going to get emotional. Um, Vernon, with your, your introduction and your mention about the, uh, the recent ice storm and uh, the power issue, boy, I'm glad I'm not running for re-election. <laughs> of course, uh, Rosie's down here doing the happy dance, so. But let me, uh, let me thank you for the, the kind introduction, Vernon. I know we go way back, and uh, you've been on this journey with us, and we appreciate you. Uh, friends, Partners, citizens, it is indeed an honor to join all of you this afternoon. Before I get into my remarks, I, I'd like to, as I always try to do and have for the past eight years, thank some folks. I want to thank Jeff King. I want to thank uh, Bill Thornton for his hard work in Cancun. I mean, uh, for, <laughs> sorry about that, sorry about that. No, his daughter was getting married, so, but y'all need to make sure that he gets his share of grief when he gets home. I want everybody to ask about the wedding. Everybody, everybody make note that he had way too many margaritas, but that will, um, that will help welcome him home. But I want to thank the, uh, the Chamber of Commerce and the team for hosting this lunch and what will be my final State of the City address. Let's give them a hand. That was a pretty good team that put this whole thing together. And thank you all. Well, just eight years ago, I announced my candidacy for mayor of Fort Worth. And I asked for your trust. You answered by giving Rosie and me your resounding support and continued support. It's been an unforgettable honor to serve the proud people of this strong, safe, and growing city. A lot has happened since taking office in 2003. A lot has changed. We've been on a whirlwind journey. But together, we've marched side by side to overcome great challenge and seize tremendous opportunities. Although much work remains, today we can see the other side of that great recession. And I'm proud to say that Fort Worth remains strong and resilient. I don't know how it happened, but the stars aligned over Fort Worth during the past 12 months. I think you will agree. Our city impressed millions as we hosted the Pittsburgh Steelers, ESPN, and others for the biggest football game on the planet. We witnessed the magical undefeated run of our mighty Rose Bowl champion, Horn Frogs. Go Frogs! <laughs> And while we were at it, we also saw the TCU baseball team go to the College World Series. You can give them a hand. Go Frog. And we had another little local baseball club that went to the World Series, our own Texas Rangers. And one thing that Rosie and I won't soon forget and that was the bitterly cold day in Wisconsin as we stood in awe and watched the launch of the massive USS Fort Worth. How cool was that? Nothing gives our city or its people more stature than this remarkable vessel navigating the world's oceans, Kay, in the name of freedom. 2010 was something else, but that's not to say that there weren't some challenges. We continued to wrestle with the city's aging infrastructure, we balanced the budget in the face of unprecedented circumstances. And we continued our critical work to improve the health of the city's pension fund. Now that that work has begun to address that challenge, it must not stop. We have got to finish that journey. As you know, the mayor has only one vote. And I am proud to serve on this city council along with a dedicated group of community leaders. Mayor Pro Tem Danny Scarth, Council Member Sal Espino, Zim Zimmerman, Frank Moss, Jungus Jordan, Carter Burdett, Kathleen Hicks, and Joel Burns. Please stand or raise your hand. Stand up or raise your hand. Let us thank you for the work that you guys do. <laughs> and
And let me say, so there's no doubt in any of your minds about how I feel about these folks, without any hesitation, each of these council members are tried and proven leaders, and those seeking re-election deserve to remain in office. You can give them a hand. They have worked hard, and they deserve to stay. Now, advising this council throughout most of the past year was our talented chief city executive team, including our former city, man or city manager, Dale Fissler, who recently retired, and is on his, he is now on his way to become an assistant city manager in Waco. Now, Dale successfully guided our city with deliberate focus through one of our nation's deepest recessions. These past three years have been difficult on him, but I believe that this was Dale's time for a reason. Dale set a course that has left this city stronger than he found it, and I have no doubt he will do the same for Waco. Dale, please stand up and let us thank you again. We appreciate you being here. He's going to leave and go back down and get on his houseboat. Well, serving as city manager in the interim is Tom Higgins, and he needs no introduction to this audience. Tom joined the city in 1987, and we thank him for his continued commitment to our citizens. Someone else who deserves our appreciation is my wife and your first lady, Rosie. She, yeah. she is a special woman and one who works as hard as anybody to preserve and improve that quality of life that we value so deeply. She's graceful and courageous. She's a remarkable leader, remarkable role model. She's my strength, and she is my rock. So thank you, Precious, and I can't wait to come home and help you with the house. <laughs> I got some great ideas about colors and fabric and furniture. Maybe some beanbag chairs, I hear their back. <laughs> Little surround sound, life will be good. Can't wait. We're also joined today by one of our sons, Troy, his wife, Julie, and two of our grandchildren, Ross and Ashley. Hi, guys, appreciate you all being here. I think you've been here almost every year that we've had the State of the City, and I appreciate you being here again. Today, I'd like to, uh, to keep my message simple. If there is one thing that I have learned over the last eight years, it is this. Here in Fort Worth, partnerships equal progress. You're gonna hear that again and again in my remarks. Because when I say partnerships, I'm not talking about sharing a carpool or splitting a chicken fried steak. I'm thinking bigger than that. I'm talking specifically about public-private partnerships and other innovative alliances. These partnerships have shaped our city's past, and make no mistake, they will define its future. Two weeks ago, thanks to Super Bowl 45, the eyes of the world were on North Texas. And while it was warmer that week in Green Bay than in Fort Worth, but that's another story, that's not what I'm going to remember. Rosie and I will remember how our city came together. We'll remember our ambassadors and our pep rally. We'll remember the faces of new friends and the compliments that we receive from far and wide. I'll remember watching national ESPN broadcasts with our beautiful downtown as a backdrop. And I'll remember the TCU band and showgirls who showed up at 5 a.m. that frigid morning to kick off ESPN's first broadcast. During Super Week, downtown was electric. Sundance Square saw triple the weekly pedestrian traffic. Hotel occupancy rates were up across the city, and occupancy downtown was up by 32 percent. The line of cars trying to get into downtown on Saturday was like the, y'all got the visual? It was like the famous final scene in the movie Field of Dreams. Yes, we built it, and I think you will agree, they came. I'll never forget that. Neither will our officers trying to manage that traffic. <laughs> Chief. And it wasn't just traffic downtown. It was web traffic as well. The CVB's internet traffic was up 56 percent. 
Sundance Square's website alone saw a 147% increase in visitors. And of course, we won't forget those cheeseheads and Steeler fans soaking up that frigid weather in nothing but their Bermuda shorts, <laughs> among other things. Well, I knew we were going to have fun with our visitors from the Northeast when the anchor of the morning show in Green Bay, uh, while preparing for a live shot in Cowtown Diner where Rosie and I were preparing for a, a TV appearance, ask, looking at the buffet, is this salsa? Is this salsa? What do you put this on? <laughs> Rosie said, ice cream. <laughs> I think she actually believed her. <clears throat> One visitor was blown away by Fort Worth's hospitality. He said, the people here are so nice. He said, my wife has been called darling more times than I've called her that in 38 years of marriage. <laughs> Only in Fort Worth. Well, last year I told you that Fort Worth would not miss this opportunity. And I think you will agree, we did not. Now, if that captive audience didn't experience Fort Worth in person, they experienced it through television, radio, and the internet. With an average audience of more than 111 million people, Super Bowl 45 was the most watched program in the history of television. Think about that, in the history of television. Payoff has been, and it's going to continue to be, immeasurable. This exposure has spawned short and long-term economic opportunity, commerce, business growth, and jobs. So despite the weather, Fort Worth shined. Just look at the record sales in Sundance Square, the record crowds in the stockyards. What a success. But think about this for a moment. Why was it a success? What was the key to taking that ball across the goal line? Partnerships, that's what. As I said earlier, partnerships equal progress. Shortly after the announcement on May 22, 2007, that Super Bowl 45 would be played here in North Texas, Fort Worth sprang into action. And our private sector and business leaders stood ready to help. We soon had a collective vision and a public-private partnership called Touchdown Fort Worth. You're starting to hear a little bit more about it now that we brought it out of the shadows where we kept it intentionally wrapped very tightly. Funded by the Fort Worth Promotion Fund, the same, the same thing that, that, that is funded by the party in Fort Worth, which many of you recently attended. We brought together business, tourism, and sports experts. The goal was pretty simple, and it was to ensure the best exposure for Fort Worth during Super Bowl week. ESPN was a big whale in the vast ocean. And thanks to Touchdown Fort Worth, we caught it. We caught it. That success funded, uh, it fueled even more success. Because we marched in unison, opportunity was realized for the greater good of our city. It was a wonderful and successful journey, one filled with excitement, surprises, and yes, new friends. Among those to recognize are my wife Rosie, Ed Bass, John and Cami Goff, Bill Thornton, Shirley Little, Tom Higgins, Libby Watson, Johnny Campbell, Tracy Gilmore, Pam and Billy Minnick, David Dubois, John Cycle, Andy Taft, Secret Weapons, Nolan and Ruth Ryan, Gary and Kelsey Patterson, Johnny and Betty Rutherford, and Janesco Sports Enterprises. I believe in giving credit where credit is due, and you can give those hands. Give those folks a big hand. They, they work hard. <laughs> One more thing that we had. Behind it all, Fort Worth had its own coach putting things together for a winning team game plan. That fellow was Chris Gavris. If he's here today, I'd ask him to stand up. Where are you, Chris? I know you're here. You're just not standing. Well, give him a hand anyway. He worked, he worked very hard and tirelessly this city. So with Touchdown Fort Worth, we planned the work and we worked the plan. Partnerships like Touchdown Fort Worth have proven their worth several times over. And that's nothing new for us when you think about it. Partnerships are the bread and the butter of Fort Worth's prosperity. And my successor, whoever that might be, should always remember that partnerships are the key to our city's success. 
Think about our city's early pioneers who picked up sledgehammers and shovels to build that first railroad to our city. Think about Fort Worth's bomber plant. Think about Sundance Square, West 7th, Southeast Fort Worth. Think about our nationally recognized zoo, Alliance, Texas Motor Speedway. In every case, partnerships equaled progress. So when it comes to partnerships, Fort Worth did set the bar, and we wrote the book. And what do we have to show for all of these partnerships? Economic opportunity, growth and prosperity, and J-O-B-S jobs, the driver of any economy. These partnerships come in many forms. They're loose associations, they're formal alliances, they're personal friendships that are built on trust. Whatever form they take, partnerships are all about stepping out of that proverbial box and working together for the greater good. It's about recognizing the limitations of one and leveraging the strengths of many. It's about an honest toil in harmony. Now let me share just a few specific examples about how partnerships have fueled progress in Fort Worth. We've used these partnerships to diversify our economy. Take, for instance, our convention center hotel. Let's go back to a little history. Mayor Kenneth Barr and his council deserve credit for their unique vision of a hotel to serve our convention visitors. This was one of the first issues that I addressed when announcing my candidacy for mayor more than eight years ago. Kenneth will be the first to tell you that he and the city council at the time were in the middle of a battle royal over the concept of a publicly owned convention center hotel. Wisely, Mayor Barr and the leaders at the time directed the city to take a step back, take a step back and re-examine the big picture. As I made my pitch for mayor in 2003, I made it clear that if I had the honor of serving as mayor, Fort Worth would have a state-of-the-art convention center hotel, but it would do so through the resources available from a public private partnership. Instead of the city building a hotel, the city would create the incentives to lay the foundation for a successful private venture. Over the next several years, we committed to that strategy, and Fort Worth found a friend in Mr. Bob Rowling and the Omni Hotels. Today, the success of our partnership has been an absolute game changer for our city. We met and surpassed our five-year goal to double tourism. And over the past two years, during a recession, mind you, Fort Worth saw a 68% increase in hotel stays and millions of visitors downtown. In fact, the Omni Fort Worth Hotel is among the top hotels in the Omni chain. This additional hotel capacity created by the Omni equals larger conventions. And larger conventions mean more room nights for not some, but all of our hotels. And what do those visitors mean to us, to our businesses, to the people of Fort Worth? It means commerce. It means jobs. It improves the dynamics of our economy by diversifying our tax base. It all comes together to create a healthier, balanced economy. That, my friends, is the power of partnership. Fort Worth public-private partnerships also help community challenges in solving those challenges. Let's take, for example, the animals that you saw outside the ballroom today. Well, there's a story behind them, as you might guess. In 2008, Bill Baker and his wife, Tony, were moved by a story that they read about Fort Worth's struggle to find homes for adoptable animals abandoned at its shelter. Well, at the time, Homes were found for less than half of the 4,500 incoming adoptable dogs and cats each year, less than half. Something had to be done, and the Bakers took a stand. Bill put his head together with Fort Worth Code Compliance Director Brandon Bennett, his staff, and community stakeholders to find a solution. Ultimately, Bill helped broker a deal with PetSmart Charities to open the first of its kind municipal animal adoption center in a PetSmart retail store. Under the agreement, PetSmart provides the space, the city provides the animals and caring staff, and the operating costs are covered by generous private donations. 
You'll find that new 1,800 square foot adoption center at, <clears throat> at PetSmart store at the shopping center just northwest of Hewlin and I-20. Has it made a difference? You bet. In December of 2009, only 80 impounded animals were adopted, 80. But this past December, more than 300 were adopted. And since we opened the doors to the new adoption center, I want you to listen to this carefully. The city hasn't euthanized one healthy adoptable animal, not one, not one. <clears throat> PetSmart has opened four more pet adoption centers across the country using Fort Worth's business model of how to get things done through a public-private partnership. So Bill and Brandon Bennett are here today. Y'all stand up and let us give you a hand. That was going the extra mile, and thank you all very much. <laughs> Working together, Working together turned a negative into a proud positive. And that's making our city a better place to live for both people and pets. Now, I know Brandon and his staff will be standing by to help you adopt one of those animals as you leave today. So y'all be sure and stop by and say hello. And I might tell you, you might need to hurry because I understand one dog has already been adopted and two more are on hold. So. Y'all take care of business on your way out. Partnerships have furthered progress in addressing the challenges that come with living in the fastest growing large city in the United States. One of our major challenges, of course, is mobility. And let me share some numbers. Over the past year, the city improved or reconstructed 163 lane miles of streets. As part of our accessibility issues and initiatives, we installed 320 wheelchair ramps, and we patched more than 230,000 potholes. And I know every one of you are saying, I wish it was 230,001. But that's progress on many levels. There's still work to be done. Does this region continue to face significant mobility challenges? Yes. Will there be additional speed bumps, no pun intended, along the way? Absolutely. But as Edward Murrow once said, difficulty is the excuse history never accepts. Although the road is rough, a challenge caused by the demands of extraordinary growth, we continue to make deliberate progress through important and unique partnerships. I-35, check. Southwest Parkway, check. Tower 55, check. Let me briefly expand on these projects, because I know you're thinking, well, they're not through yet. In October, the Texas Transportation Commission approved $135 million for the expansion of I-35 between downtown and Highway 287. This artery is vital to fueling the continued success at Alliance and North Fort Worth, Sal. Construction is expected to begin next year and be completed in 2017. Work on the 28-mile public-private partnership called Southwest Parkway began last spring. This is a major step to relieve congestion in Southwest Fort Worth, to clear the air, and build a seamless connection between Tarrant and Johnson counties. This $1.4 billion project is expected to open in 2013, Jungus. Another major victory was the public-private partnership that will begin re <clears throat> reliving relieving, I'm sorry, the congested rail corridor at Tower 55, just southwest of downtown. Roughly 100 freight and passenger trains cross daily, and crossing is the problem. As, as these trains sit idle, waiting to cross, they not only waste valuable time, they block roadways, they pollute our air, and they block key corridors to future commuter rail service. These trains are also a danger to the families and the children living in those neighboring communities. Well, I'm proud to say after years of cussing and discussing, Tower 55 stakeholders came together and they are addressing this significant challenge. How is Tower 55 a public-private partnership? Simple. Everyone has skin in the game. 
everyone has skin in the game. Instead of the public picking up the entire $90 million tab, private partners are rightfully committed to the solution. BNSF and Union Pacific have committed $51 million to that tab. And the rest will come from the city, the federal government, COG, and the Fort Worth Transportation Authority. This partnership will improve livability and safety in Fort Worth. And what's more, these major mobility projects continue to fuel progress in the forms of hundreds of construction jobs. Our progress on mobility solutions is the result of significant efforts by our city council, by private partners, and our federal and state legislators, Kay. Each have been absolutely instrumental. We're also grateful to Bill Meadows and the Texas Transportation Commission, to Maribel Chavez, TxDOT, as well as Michael Morris, the Regional Transportation Council. And on the subject of mobility, let's be very clear about the future of streetcars in Fort Worth. The urban streetcar is worthy of review, Joe, but review under a different equation. Not unlike our effort to reassess the Convention Center Hotel proposal, let's hit the reset button. Let's consider another model with greater participation from the private sector. I personally believe that Fort Worth can and will find a successful balance. Partnerships have met economic, meant economic opportunity for thousands. Thanks to the talented city staff and the innovative tools at the council's disposal, what we call our toolbox, there are countless examples of, of successful partnerships fueling economic progress. Some are as big as Alliance, which today admits more than $5 billion in foreign products annually and has created 30,000 jobs. Others are small yet also important. Take, for example, Mr. Ki Song. He owned and operated a men's clothing store in southeast Fort Worth, but he had a bigger dream, a new location with expanded merchandise. With the help from Andre McEwing and Southeast Fort Worth, Inc., Mr. Song found a foreclosed property that had sat vacant for years. It was old, dirty, and dark. But that's not what Mr. Song saw. He saw something else. He saw potential. He had a vision. And with the city's assistance through the Eastbury Tax Increment Financing District, his vision was within reach. Mr. Song committed more than a million dollars to renovate that location. The TIF, through the increased value of the property, chipped in over 200,000 for new infrastructure. The renovation was completed in October. And Mr. Song is proudly open for business, with the new name being Men's Collection and Ladies' Selection. <laughs> to complement, I'll give you that opportunity in a second. To complement the building improvements, there are trees, there are new sidewalks, there are new light standards to improve both the aesthetics and the security. So on top of cleaning up an old eyesore, there's a new tax base. There's expanded sales tax potential and he created more than three additional full-time jobs in the process. Now I would ask you to give him a hand and please Mr. Song stand so we can thank you. There are plenty of other redevelopment examples. Thanks to the efforts of Lockard Companies, Mariah Real Estate, we have the, the remarkable Renaissance Square on the former Masonic home property in Southeast Fort Worth. This project will add new retail and restaurants to a place some thought was forgotten. Well, Kathleen, we didn't forget. Frank, we didn't forget. According to Lockhart, approximately 300,000 square feet of Renaissance Square is under letter of intent in lease negotiations or land leases and sales. I, I see Susan down here, just a big grin on her face. With the addition of the nearby improvements to Highway 287 and Berry Street intersection, the bold Renaissance Square development will be bustling with activity by the end of 2012. I want to give a special shout out to Michael Malley, who made this historical transformation possible. He also had a vision. We also have plans for the contemporary Ray Street lofts in Riverside. We have the location of the former Granbury Hill Apartments 
that, that will be transformed into a bright transit-oriented development in South Fort Worth. We're also working with the state to bring in more than 50 new affordable rental homes to the near south side with hopes to do the same in Como and other communities. These partnerships are golden. They are real. And they are creating jobs as well as opportunity for all. We can and we must continue to seize these opportunities. In fact, we need to push even harder. We've used public-private partnerships to promote a sustainable city. And ladies and gentlemen, I think this is very important for our city, for your home. If you don't think sustainability is important, let me see if I can put it in the proper perspective. Fort Worth's population grew by more than 200,000 in 10 short years. In other words, Fort Worth added a population the size of Lubbock since the year 2000. With the fastest growth of any large city in Texas, Fort Worth's population now stands at more than 400, or 741,000. And let me tell you, if our secret wasn't out before Super Bowl, it is now. And more and more people are going to learn about our quality of life and opportunity here in Fort Worth. Our city is going to continue to grow, make no mistake. And so will our businesses, and so will our commerce. However, this growth must be managed responsibly. You can build a city responsibly, or you can build it irresponsibly. And that's why my city council colleagues and our talented city staff and I remain focused on sustainability. We must continue to foster partnerships that encourage energy efficient and environmentally friendly development. The nearly completed Brit facility just north of the Botanic Gardens is just one stellar example. The new Art Institute of Fort Worth is another. Those are just a couple of the LEED certified buildings in our city. Another sustainable project is Meritage Homes, Frank. We went out to cut the ribbon on that development in East Fort Worth, and it is the first high performance green community in, in the DFW area. Our continued growth requires that kind of innovation. For instance, more people equals more trash. So we've teamed up with Waste Management to bring new solar trash compactors downtown. These compactors hold five times as much waste and they reduce the pickups in the process. Well, why is building partnerships like these important? Because they will be vital to preserve our good standard of living for our children and for our children's children. It's about fighting back pollution that could stifle the very opportunity that made Fort Worth an economic oasis in a dry and desolate desert. Building a sustainable city also is about attracting the best and the brightest who will continue to fuel our competitive workforce and support our growing economy. Our future leaders are looking for the kind of urban settings that we're creating in downtown, along Magnolia, and throughout the West 7th Street corridor. They want to live, work, and play in the same general location. They reject crowded highways. They would rather walk, ride, or bike, or use public transit. To generations X and Y, being green is more than just a catchphrase. It's a lifestyle. It's an attitude. In fact, it's a responsibility. And friends, if they don't find that lifestyle here in Fort Worth, they're going to find it somewhere else. And when they leave, then we all lose. As the growth in Fort Worth continues, and it will, we must maintain our focus on building up instead of out. We need to commit to mixed-use development and convenient public transit. We must continue to foster those partnerships to promote green development and clean energy. Partnerships in Fort Worth also have improved public safety. I'm not sure if some of the younger crowd here realizes it, but there was a time when Fort Worth bore the unfortunate label of being one of the most dangerous cities in the country. Until the 1980s, downtown Fort Worth was like many urban areas in America. It was tired, it was gray, it was dirty. About the only time you took the family downtown was to drive past the Santa displays at Monning's during Christmas. Y'all are too young to remember all that. Fortunately, for all of us, 
A new public-private partnership blossomed as the Bass family began buying dilapidated structures just south of the courthouse in the late 70s. Many of these old buildings represented former days of saloons, gambling parlors, and shooting galleries. It was a time for major change, and boy, did it ever come. Today, the once vacant, dangerous, and dilapidated Central Business District is now the largest real estate property taxpayer in Tarrant County. This has a great deal to do with our city's strategic alliances and private partners, such as Downtown Fort Worth, Inc., Sundance Square, XTO, and others. Downtown Fort Worth is the jewel in our, crowns, in, in our city's crown, and it's also a national model of urban redevelopment. What's more, our police department's partnership with Sundance Square and XTO security forces is another national model for public-private collaboration. Because of our ability to form partnerships, our downtown today is safe, it's clean, it's inviting. It's both progressive and, make no mistake, authentically Texan. Most importantly, it's the kind of place that you want to take your wife, your date, your family, or friends from out of town. It's a remarkable shift, and it represents the extraordinary progress that can be achieved by thinking differently, thinking strategically, thinking beyond the ordinary, and building a bridge between the public and private sectors. And I can't leave the subject of public safety without mentioning the Fort Worth Crime Control and Prevention District. This has been and continues to be one of the most successful partnerships with the citizens in our city's entire history. Our remarkable drop in crime since the inception of this district is proof that it works and we must continue to support it. But whether we're talking about keeping our streets free of crime, being stewards of our environment, creating jobs, or re-energizing neighborhoods. Partnerships can lift a community to heights never imagined. At an event several months back to announce the Hope Walk held here in downtown Super Bowl Sunday, former Washington Redskin and NFL Hall of Famer Daryl Green talked about the power of citizens helping citizens. He said, Rosie, and I, I remember because you were standing there with me, he said something that struck us. He said, in the old Western movies, when that building caught fire, everybody picked up a bucket. Everybody picked up a bucket. Well, friends, that's been the key to our success. Think about it. Our natural, automatic, and sincere instinct to pick up that bucket. This all for one and one for all spirit can be found in the offices of City Hall, in the hallways of local businesses and in our neighborhoods. That spirit is found in the hearts of all of you, in Rosie and me. Look at the progress we've made together. Look at the progress we've made together on the issue of homelessness. In the last two years, the last two years, the number of people living on our streets has dropped by 30%, 30%. More than 560 people touched by our Directions Home program have moved into stable, secure housing. You've changed lives, Fort Worth, one life at a time. You've given people a new opportunity to have a second chance. How good does that feel? How good does that feel? Thank you. <laughs> Never has there been a time when the generosity of private philanthropists and business leaders meant so much in addressing a difficult and costly public challenge. You know, it's been said that, and I quote, every time people can contribute successfully to the cause of serving the community, they become even more committed to it. Well, that's exactly what you've seen here in Fort Worth. We found the intrinsic value of partnerships. Our success as a city is built on them. Ladies and gentlemen, it has been an honor to serve as your mayor. It has been the highlight of my public service. And the most valuable lesson I've learned is that partnerships do equal progress. The equation is as simple as it is powerful. 
Greater things are yet to come, Fort Worth. It is my hope, indeed my prayer, that those leading our city into the future do so on that foundation of partnerships. The future of our city and the 741,000 people who are so blessed to call it home depend on it. So God bless you, and may God continue to bless the great city of Fort Worth.